Well, here we are, Space Trash Episode 2. It's only been like, oh my god, it's been 8 months since the last episode. Well, I guess time flies when you're in space. Anyway, welcome to Space Trash, the show where we look at movies that are kinda trash but sometimes kinda good. Dave, what have we got on the menu today? Inframan. <laughs> Inframan, or The Super Inframan, is a 1975 Hong Kong science fiction action film, and oh my god, what is this movie? In response to characters like Ultraman in The Cayman Rider, Inframan, or as the translation says, Chinese Superman, is the embodiment of weird Chinese 70s superhero films, complete with guys in rubber suits, crazy ass fight scenes, and uh, I don't even know what that is. <laughs> I came across this movie the other week when me and my friends were in a store and one of them spotted this beaut of a Blu-ray and said, Hey Jensen, look at this, this looks cool and it's Chinese. So I just picked it up and I bought it and we watched it later that day and jeez, I don't even know what to tell you about this movie. It's insane. Alright, let me just explain the opening scene to y'all. We begin with this school bus, just you know, driving along, and then out of nowhere this freaking dragon flies over, lands on the roads, causes an earthquake, then this guy dies, then the city burns, and then there's people on fire, I mean look at that one guy falling out the window. And then there's nothing. Just complete silence. I love that this is like the first three minutes of this. <laughs> yeah. This is usually the point of the video where I try to explain a basic plot of the movie, but to be honest, I can't really tell you what's going on in this film. And that's completely fine. This movie will entertain you with or without plot. I've watched it twice now and I don't really understand what my eyes are witnessing, but if I had to guess, I'm pretty sure this lady named the Demon Princess Elzebub, oh and translated, she's known as Princess Dragon Mom. <laughs> I don't know man, that's what Wikipedia says. Anyway, she wakes up and wants to destroy the earth or something with a team of guys in rubber suits. So these army guys try to stop her by creating Inframan and the rest kinda speaks for itself. <laughs> Our main character, Inframan, is kinda the coolest guy going. Every time he's about to fight he transitions into Inframan and this little sequence plays. That's right. Every time he fights, it's, it's kind of amazing. And speaking of the fight scenes, this movie has some great ones. People just explode for no reason, Inframan does a bunch of flips, there's even this one part where he does a flip in reverse and it's kind of amazing. There's this one bit where Inframan fights this red guy and while the fight is going on, the red guy just grows the size of a building. And Inframan's like, oh crap, so then he grows the same size and then they have this crazy kaiju fight scene but it's not really that crazy because they're in the middle of the desert and it just kind of feels like a normal fight scene. Oh no, don't kill the crab. <laughs> uh, it's pretty good. But sadly this film isn't always the kick-ass craziness I've been showing you. Towards the end of act 2 the movie hits a real low point. The action kind of stopped and the film started trying to put plot points in that weren't in from and just beating up guys in rubber suits and that kind of sucks. At this point me and my friends really lost interest and were pretty sad that the movie didn't hold up its energy throughout the whole thing. But if anyone out there wants to watch this film, this low point is a great time where you can just, you know, get some snacks, go for a walk, maybe play around a settle as a Catan and then after that get back to the movie because the ending is incredible. Inframan has to go rescue this guy because he's been frozen or something and the fight that you're about to witness is maybe the best thing ever put on film. So Inframan has got to fight these extendo head robot guys and I mean just, just look at this. The lack of music in the scene really shows the raw and realistic nature of this fight scene makes it feel real. Now, I would tell you how this movie ends, but at this point, I think I blacked out from how good the film is. I'm pretty sure if it explodes or something, <laughs> I can't really remember. Inframan truly is a film to remember. The sound effects, the action, the backflips, Inframan's goofy looking costume and that jammed freaking soundtrack. Yeah, it's, it's, it's just all so good. That quote I showed at the beginning from Roger Ebert is real, believe it or not, and I think he was right about it. When they stop making movies like Inframan, a little light will go out in the world. It's, it's so poetic. Well, that's all I gotta say about Inframan. I really recommend watching it. I'm pretty sure I made up some weird, crappy rating system for this show. Um, wait one minute, let me find it. Okay, yeah, uh, okay, I'll put it in the employee recommendation shelf. Go get some friends and watch this film. I'm pretty sure the whole thing is on YouTube, so you have no excuse.
Anyway, that's all from me, and thanks for watching this episode of Space Trash. If you're watching this at the time of release, then look out on this channel because it's spooky season is upon us, and I'm feeling kind of spooky. Anyway, that's all folks. Subscribe if you want. You don't have to. Bye-bye.